Alex Stubb is the former Prime Minister of Finland, now is the Director of Professor of the School of Transnational Governance and the Chair of the Marti and Stari Peace Foundation. All right, Alex, let's be blunt here. At the moment, uh, President Erdogan has his foot on the neck of Finland and Sweden's membership. And it doesn't look likely yet, yet, that the price has been found for removing it. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, the situation is quite complicated. Obviously, as the eternal optimist and perhaps a long-time diplomat, I also believe that these things have a tendency to get sorted in the long run. Basically, it's about three issues. One, the Kurds and PKK. Two is an arms embargo. And three is a purchase of f 35 from the United States. And I'm sure that this should be ironed out before the summit in Madrid end of June. But, you know, the thing I keep looking at, it's like the, it's like the oil embargo uh, or the, the oil sanction. It took X number of weeks and uh, Victor Orban and this, that and the other, and there's still the gas, and now it's going to take weeks and weeks and weeks before uh, Finland... Meanwhile, Zelensky has lost 20% of his country and Putin is moving forward in a way that Kissinger was right. It's just a question of the price for peace. Well, yeah, I mean, and the price for peace has to be communicated. Perhaps a, at least one example from here. You know, in an uncomfortable peace in 1944, Finland accepted a cease and fire and truth with Stalin. We lost 10% of our country at the time. Actually, the area where my father was born and where my grandparents were born and 400,000 people had to migrate. Uh, back into what we call Finland nowadays. In Ukraine, it's now 20% of the territory and over 5 million people that are refugees. So the situation is very difficult, that's for sure. You're a realist, you're a diplomat, you know the real politic of this. Zelensky, you know, everybody says Ukraine will decide what the price of peace is, but that's a load of rubbish, as you know. A, because... They require $5 billion a day, and there's not going to be $5 billion worth of financing. B, they require more advanced technology in terms of weaponry, and they may or may not get that. And C, the West is just going to get tired of it. Well, I have warned against war fatigue for a while already, and the reason for this is that Solidarity will start waning away. People start looking at inflation, the price of food, the price of energy, also the refugee situation. But my plea is that we continue to support Zelensky. And I think the moral thing to do here, the right thing to do is to allow for the Ukrainians to decide what the balance of peace is. We cannot be the ones telling them where the war should stop. We can only support them and hope that at the end of the day they will win. But I do admit that the situation is very complicated. Right. I mean, I, I watched the Netflix movie Munich, The Edge of War, over the weekend, which, if you haven't watched it, is it, it, you watch it and you realise uh, just how close the parallels are to what's happening uh, at the moment. Did we learn anything from Munich in 1938? Well, I mean, it's difficult to say. I mean, I watched the movie as well. And, you know, on one hand, you have the chamberlains of Europe saying that we need to go for appeasement, we need to find a peace, and bona fide believe Putin's word. And then we have the Winston Churchills, to which I put Zelensky, who say completely the opposite, that says the only way in which we can end this is full-scale war, and that's what's going on at the moment. I think the lesson that we have to learn is to look at other similar types of warfares. And I think the winter war uh, between the Soviet Union attacked Finland in 1939, that one lasted 105 days. It was the Finns themselves who decided when we should go for the ceasefire. And I think the Ukrainians should be allowed to do that. So I would say no to appeasement. Alex Sub. Uh, a stunning rumour, wherever you are. In Florence, I believe. Well, uh, let, me, let me just give you, if you ask, oh. look, look, oh, look up there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this is what we have at the School of Transnational Governance at the European University Institute. How lovely. For us. One for a room after another. You wouldn't want to have to repaint that in a hurry. Uh, thank you very much. Good yeah. to see you, Alex. Thank you.